All right, it is the end of April. It's been a super busy month. I haven't really had any time to go on adventures. Well, I kind of went on some adventures. I went camping at Easter. Went on a plane ride interstate, that was nice. But no bike adventures, so I've decided to make a video about my old mountain bike. I've had heaps of questions about the things I've done to it, like disc brakes. And I just thought it'd be nice to make a video and show you guys. So I'm gonna need a nice quiet area to film this. And seeing I haven't ridden my bike in over a month, I've decided I'm gonna head down an old fire trail near my parents' place. It's only a short ride to the bottom and I haven't been down here in years. I used to come down pretty much every afternoon after school growing up. So I'm keen to check it out. Let's go down and uh, let's talk about this bike. Just a warning though, this bike is um, still a bit of a, a shit box, but I love it, so let's get into it. All right, we're nearly at the end of the fire trail. A little fun fact for you guys. About 20 years ago, me and my mates decided to extend the trail. This way we can get all the way down to the water. Let's go. Since cutting in this trail, pretty sure it's commonly used by people walking their dogs and just heading down to the water, so I'm sure there's a lot of people that are glad we cut this one in. It's a nice bit of single trail now. Come on, you gotta love this brakes. Now, before we start talking about the bike, I'll take this jumper off. Does this mic look stupid? Oh well, you're getting it anyway. Alright, before we talk about the bikes, I just want to show you this place I'm at. About 20 years ago, I was in high school and we used to come down here all the time, have campfires, and we also had this massive rope swing. So, right behind me, there's three trees. We had a big V rope and then a third tree to pull us up. We had about 20 guys would pull us to the top of this huge tree up behind me and um, they'll just let us go and it'd be a massive rope swing. It's pretty crazy actually. I, um, I used to have some video footage of it but I accidentally recorded over it back in the, back in the day of tapes. But anyway, let's talk about this bike. All right, the bike. The story behind it. I got asked to go bike packing last year and I was all for it. So I was straight online, thought I'd uh, buy a new bike. Turns out they're pretty expensive and I didn't really want to spend too much money. So I decided to buy just an old 90s mountain bike and um, do a few changes to it and go bike packing. So the main question I get asked is about the disc brake. So let's take my helmet off. What I might do is I've got some Allen keys here. I might take this front rack off and we'll have a closer look. All right, here we have our modified front forks. One thing to note is these were steel forks. Now, I got this bike with a heap of steel on it because it's the only thing I knew how to weld it. So, first step, I had to buy some new wheels with discs on them, of course. So I ended up buying these two front and rear for 50 bucks off Facebook Marketplace. Once I had the wheels, I had to make sure that it actually fit in between the forks because the clearance here is super tight. I don't know if all forks will work, but um, these ones did, which is good. Once I'd done that, I then found some calipers. Again, Facebook Marketplace, um, 25 bucks for the front and rear, just cheap, nasty things, but they do the job. They're hydraulic, so I'm pretty happy. Um, then I needed this adapter piece here, so I ended up making up a bit of cardboard template, and I've just, um, just kept cutting it to size until I got it somewhere where I wanted it. I had a bit of eight mil thick steel at work, and um, I just cut it to size, drilled a heap of holes in it to try and make it as light as possible because this bike is heavy. Um, and yeah, once I had it all apart, then I ended up uh, bolting it in position and tacking it on there and then hitting it with the welder. Something to mention about this bike, it's a kind 
combination of a steel and chromoly frame. It's got a chromoly top and bottom tube, but the rest of the frame is steel. I chose this bike because of the steel and it's the only metal I knew how to weld, but have been practicing my TIG welding. I actually got a family friend over to uh, teach me how to use a TIG welder. And while they were here, I actually got them to weld the, the mounts on the front forks just because their welds look much nicer than mine do. So the rest I did myself though. Something else that I also did was um, I made these little plates here. They're probably a bit overkill. Um, this is just to mount my rack to. Turns out that these front forks are quite thick, so I probably could have just drilled and tapped them. They're probably like a three mil thick steel, um, so they're quite heavy actually, but pretty strong. Done a few trips on them now and they haven't broken on me, so happy days. Now for the rear, very similar. Just a steel rear triangle. This time I just used a bit of three mil flat bar and I just twisted and buckled it to a shape that sort of meant the caliper was square with the disc and that's about it. I also put in these two um, mounts here for that original rack that I made, but I don't use that anymore, so I'll probably end up cutting them off. All right, another question I've been asked a few times is, what tires am I running? How wide are they and what's the clearance like? Well, these are a Maxxis Crossmark and they are 2.25 wide and yeah, they fit. There's a bit of clearance there. Um, I'll show you a couple of snaps. These Maxxis Crossmarks have this center ridge which has good rolling resistance, so they pedal pretty well. And some knobs on the side for cornering. All right. Hugger off. All right, another thing I've done is I've changed the stem and the handlebars. The main reason I did this is, this is a pretty large frame and I'm pretty short. So the original stem was super long and I was very stretched out, just way too stretched out and I wasn't that comfortable on the bike. So the shorter stem just brings it back in. I had these laying around, so I thought I may as well put the wider bars on as well. It's actually just gives me a bit more control. I find it a lot more comfortable than those original ones. Another good thing about the larger frame is it gives me a much bigger cockpit to, to store things, so pretty happy about that. Just means I don't have much uh, adjustment on my seat. It's either there or I can't touch the pedals. <laughs> Another thing that I've done is I've changed the shifters. Uh, this used to have the old grip shift style, um, which I quite liked, but I had a derailleur issue and I had these shifters and derailleur laying around so I ended up um, just changing out the derailleur and trying out these shifters because they matched and yeah it works pretty well so I'll probably just leave them on here. Something else I made, this uh, GPS holder. Couldn't find a bracket like this for the, uh, the Garmin Touch series so made my own. And that's about all I've done really. Um, yeah, pretty happy with it. Good cheap option. Got another ride coming up at the end or oh, mid-May, so looking forward to that one. I'll be riding this bike and um, yeah, should be a good one, can't wait. Well, I think that's about it. That's pretty much all I've done to the bike. If I think of anything else, I'll, um, I'll overlay it in here, but before I head off, I've got two things I wanna do. One, follow this track behind me down to the water, I'll show you that, and I'm also gonna try and climb these trees. We put a few stakes in them many years ago Probably the wrong thing to do, but um, yeah, we put them in so we climb to the top of these trees and put our ropes and harnesses up there. So let's see if I can get up there. It's been a long time. Oh, these are pretty small. Oh, I don't think I can reach another one. It's about as far as I can go. Might try that one. This one looks difficult. <laughs> I'm up to uh, timber steps now, and I do not trust that. But I used to climb all the way to the top and hang ropes all the way down and back up there. It'd be a huge swing. I wish I still had the footage. I'd love to show you guys. 
Oh well. <laughs> I thought I'd better give you a better explanation of this swing I was talking about. These three trees that you can see here, we used to have one, one big rope, or sorry, one big cable from this tree, from the very top. It would come down and then it would go up to the top of this tree into a V and then we had another short bit of cable that would clip onto our harness. And then this tree here, we had a pulley at the top. So you had like a rope that would go up around the pulley and then you would have, I don't know, 10, 15, 20 blokes just pull the rope and drag you all the way to the top of that tree and then you would just release it and you'd swing all the way out here. It was so good. This is back when I was at school. What do school kids do these days? Play on their phone? One last thing I want to do before I head home and that's just go check out the water. It's been uh, quite a few years since I've been down here, so short walk. There you have it, the water. Anyway, let's go pack up. I've got to get home, I'm starving. All right, I've got the racks back on. It's time for me to head home. I am super hungry. If you're thinking about doing something similar, I hope this was helpful, but if not, well, I'll see you on the next ride. Catch you later. <sighs> I just love hill climbs.